The state of Nevada is an area that has long been known for shallow volcanics that makes this area a high potential for geothermal power production. This power plant was built in 1990. Soda Lake One, the predecessor to it, was built in 1987. And both have been operating continuously since that time. This is the 1990 model. And so newer power plants with the same type of conversion technology have a much better level of efficiency. But it is the same basic process. What we have at this site is one of our main production wells for the facility. It produces hot water from about 1,000 meters underground. The pump is set at about 400 meters in depth. It pumps the water out of the ground, actually with a very interesting technology, where the pump is operating with the motor on the surface, and there's a drive shaft that is connected to the pump, and it's down in that 400 meter depth. The, uh, the pump itself is operating in a very hostile atmosphere at 330 degrees Fahrenheit and producing that water at about 900 gallons a minute to the surface. And then once the water gets into the system of the plant, it is equally distributed among the energy converters. That's what we call the machine that creates the electricity from the heat. That heat is used to vaporize a hydrocarbon called pentane. Uh, the pentane is heated and pressurized into a gas used to drive the turbine, which turns the generator to make the electricity. Uh, the pentane is then run through the condensers where it is cooled to a liquid and returned to the boilers by a feed pump. The generators uh, produce the electricity. From there, the electricity passes underground through transmission cables to the distribution system in the gray cabinets. The electricity is brought together, collected, and then the voltage is increased into the distribution voltage of 69,000 volts. From there, it goes to our utility. This is how we connect to the grid. This is taking all the electricity produced by Soda Lake, then conveying it to the grid. This is our transmission line. We own this one. The geothermal water is, once the heat is removed, it is cooled from about 330 degrees Fahrenheit to 170 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's returned to the ground through injection wells for recycling uh, and mining of the heat back to the production system. This is an injection well that is about 2,500 meters in depth. Its sole purpose is to take the water that's been cooled in the power plant and dispose of it into the geothermal resource so it can return back to the hot rocks where the water is reheated and is eventually pumped back out of the production wells and you're able to extract the heat again. Because of the volume of fluid that needs to be produced every day during this power plant's life, Without a place to put the cooled water to be returned into the production resource, the power plant will not operate. You produce 5,000 gallons a minute of water. If you don't have a place to inject it so that it recycles through the rock back to the production wells, the power plant won't operate. You can't dispose of it on the surface. It is just as difficult to find quality injection as it is quality production. Geothermal resources must have three very unique and specific characteristics. The first is a heat source in the form of ancient volcanics that are close to the surface. The second is groundwater adjacent to that heat source that can be heated to superheated levels. And the third item that's needed are fractures or porosity within the ground that allow you to move that hot water to the surface and that heat can be extracted to produce electricity.